Hi crafters, happy new year. Welcome to the Tunisian 2024 temperature blanket. First things first, what's a temperature blanket? Basically, a temperature blanket is a blanket that showcases the temperatures of where you are throughout the year. So every single day, you crochet a color that you've chosen according to the temperature that is there. In my case, uh, these are the colors I've chosen. 20 to 30 degrees, I have burgundy, 27, 26 peach, yellow, pink, purple, blue, gray, baby blue, navy blue, and gray. Then I made like a sample of the colors at the end. So I'll be making this uh, blanket in panels, 12 panels, one for each month. The stitch I've chosen for this project is the Tunisian extended stitch. I'll explain what Tunisian crochet is in a bit. Then one day is represented in two rows. The yarn I have is quite thin, it's three ply yarn. So I also doubled the yarn to get this sort of weight. I didn't want to use DK yarn, it's too bulky. So this is the best yarn I could use. Then I'm also choosing to use the highest temperature for the warmest months and the lowest temperature for the coldest months here in Kenya. Uh, also, this temperature will depend on where I am. So the first five days I wasn't back in Nairobi, I used the temperature in Bungoma. Then coming back, the temperature changed a bit. So you'll see a color change in my already done panel up to day nine. So what is Tunisian crochet or Afghan crochet? Basically, the crochet hook that you use is elongated might be as long as a knitting needle, then it has a stop at the end. So when you're crocheting, you have so many loops, just like the way you would in knitting. So basically, Tunisian or Af Afghan crochet is a combination of knitting and crochet. The hook, then the length of the hook, and the fact that you have so many loops on your hook, rather than just one with the usual crochet. The stitch is Tunisian extended stitch and I will illustrate how to use this stitch when you choose to make this sort of temperature blanket. I've doubled my yarn to make it as thick as I want it to be. Then we'll make a slip knot and chain 20. So each panel is around 5 inches, totaling up to a blanket that will be 16 inches long when we join the panels together. You can purchase this hook at your local craft store. I got this from Osona Yarns, I think back in 2021. So I've had it for a while. Not have made any mini projects on it, just made a sample like this one. So just decided 2024. I'll try more to miss and crochet. To start, we'll chain 20 stitches. Handling this hook takes a bit time, a bit of time to get used to, but with time you will, and it's quite fun. So chain your 20 stitches, then plus one for turning. Here's my chain. Please ensure that you crochet your chains to be as loose as you can because I want us to stitch our, to make our foundation at the back loop because Tunisian crochet tends to curl. This one is curling a bit. Because it tends to curl, we're going to stitch into the back loop, prevent it from curling. Also, you can use a needle, uh, sorry, a hook size that is below the one that you're using. In my case, I'm using four millimeter. You can use the 3.5, but I don't have the 3.5. So I'm making my 
my project using the same hook. After making your 21 chains, what you want to do is turn your work towards the back, then crochet into the second chain from the hook. So this is my second chain and this is my back loop. So that's where I'll insert my needle. After that, yarn over and pull up a loop. This is a Tunisian extended stitch. So after pulling up a loop, I'll chain one. After that, I have two loops on the hook. Then into the next back loop. First row is a bit tricky for me. After inserting your hook, pull up a loop, then chain one. As you yarn over and pull up a loop, the number of stitches on your hook increases. The next one as well. Tricky, tricky. Mm -hmm. Then yarn over and pull up a loop, then chain one. So you'll do this throughout the first row, just the first row, to prevent our project from curling. Into that back loop, yarn over, chain one, pull up a loop, then chain one. So we'll do this till the end of this first row. Here's your back loop, but you just turn your chain over to the back. That one loop, that is the back loop. So let's make it the end. So I'm at the end of my first row. Just pulled up a loop, then yarn over and chain one. What you notice is before chaining one, you just have an elongated loop, and after chaining one, these V shapes are formed. Please keep in mind our row is not complete until we have one loop remaining on the hook. After chaining one, you'll yarn over and take off that first loop from the hook. Then from there, you just yarn over and take off two loops. Two. Then two. Two. And another two. So you just take off these two loops till the end. Just the way you would the double crochet. Yarn over and take off two loops till the end. Almost at the end. At the end we'll have one loop remaining on the hook. And then one loop. So our first row is complete. When you take off all the loops and have one left, you know your row is complete. To start off our second row, we'll chain one. With Tunisian crochet, you don't turn back and forth the way you would the other forms of crochet. This one is just continuous. So this is the right side and the back is the wrong side. Just like this. Right side, wrong side. And from the wrong side you can tell the number of rows you've made. There's sort of a, a line formed after one row. Okay, so after chaining one, you have vertical bars. This bars, one, and another one is here. At the front, what you'll do is you'll skip this first vertical bar and insert your hook into the next one. Then pull up a loop, then again chain one. Insert your hook into that vertical bar. When you pull up that loop, you can see the first stitch we made has a V, and the next one is just an elongated loop. Then chain one the V. Next one, 
insert into the vertical bar, pull up a loop, then chain one. So basically this is what you'll do till the end. And after that first row, it becomes easy to make your stitches. Basically that's it. Insert your hook into the vertical bar, pull up a loop, then chain one. Just about to finish our second row. Remember there's one last vertical bar at the end. To that bar yarn over, we pull up a loop, then chain one. Our row again is not complete till we take off all the loops and remain with one on the hook. So again, yarn over, then pull up, pull through one loop, then pull through two loops, then two, two and two till the end. Then we'll be done with the second row. In just a bit, I'm going to show you how to change colors when your temperature changes. Almost done with the second row, then I'll show you how to change your color or yarn. I prefer this method. I don't have hanging tails that I have to weave in at the end. And then we have one loop remaining at the start of our row. So to change your color, first you need to determine the color that you're going to be using. So let's say this is pink, then the next day temperatures were 25 to 24 degrees. So I'll change to color yellow. So this is how I change colors in my project. With your last loop into that hook, I just yarn over, then pick up a loop then pull through that loop from the other color. Then you just make it a bit tight so that it doesn't fall off and also the new color. Then from here, just continuing on with our pattern, chain one, then we skip that vertical bar, first the vertical bar, then crochet into the next one, and over pull up a loop, chain one, into the next one, yarn over, pull up a loop, chain one. Just the same pattern we've been making. The only difference is we've changed our color. So for the first stitch, I have noticed a tail is left, so I'll just weave it in. But as you continue changing your colors, you're going to have sort of a bit of yarn hanging through. And what I like to do is just weave, in, weave it into the board so that your work is neat with no tails left. So for this project, I chose these colors and I've gotten to day nine. Today is day nine. Tomorrow day 10, I'll make a different color depending on the temperature that will be there. The choice of color is up to you. You can choose high temperatures, the reds and oranges. Then with low temperatures, you can choose cool colors like blues and purples and grays and so on. So I think this is going to be quite an interesting project and I add you to continue crocheting with me. Thank you for watching until the end. Please remember to support my channel by liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. See you on the next one, crafters.